On April 10th, 1979, most Wichitans were welcoming the spring. The winter had been long and hard. They would soon learn the spring would be harder. Wichita Falls, local officers and stations, stand by for tornado watch number 67. Wichita Falls, local officers and stations, tornado watch number 67. The National Severe Storms Forecast Center has issued a tornado watch for portions of western and north central Texas and southwest Oklahoma, 2 p.m. until 7 p.m. this Tuesday afternoon and evening. Tornadoes, large hail, and damaging thunderstorm winds are possible in these areas. The Tornado Watch area is along and 90 miles either side of a line from 30 miles southwest of Abilene, Texas to 30 miles northwest of Hobart, Oklahoma. A Tornado Watch meet conditions are favorable for tornadoes and severe thunderstorms in and close to the watch area. Persons in these areas should be on the lookout for threatening weather conditions and listen for later statements and possible warnings. Tornado watches are common in the Texas-Oklahoma border area in April. Normally, they pass from existence with little notice. The first hint that the watch of April 10th would be different came from Vernon. Fellow called us, and he says he's on the west side of Vernon, and he spotted a tornado on the ground. And he says he's taking pictures of it right now. Have you heard anything about that? Have you seen anything? Right now? Vernon was hit hard. Eleven people were dead. The damage was in the millions. Weathermen watched the killer storm cell move north across the Red River into Oklahoma. It would wreak more death and destruction on its way. Lawton would be hit hard. Not sharing the limelight at the moment was another storm cell moving northeast from Seymour toward Wichita Falls. Soon it would make its presence known.
uh, United Supermarket uh, Newsliner, I have regained my composure to a certain extent again. The damage is devastating. Undoubtedly, there must be many, many injuries. May I see uh, damage all the way to the expressway in p -Mart. Absolute total chaos. There undoubtedly has to be many, many injuries. This whole area of town is absolutely flat. Policemen running everywhere. It's just devastating. Everybody should stay away from the camp area and southwest parkway. Sight sent them all is severely damaged. There are cars turned upside down, smashed flat. They're laying out in the fields. Undoubtedly, there must be some people in these vehicles that have not been out. Faith Village is absolutely flat. There are new houses standing within my view as I drive down Kemp Boulevard. All power lines are out. There's no electricity. All available units in the area are running hot, going to and fro in an attempt to clear the debris and take injured to hospitals. what I seen or heard, never forget it, never. The sound of that thing. Sound like me and buffaloes. We kept hearing the, the wind, you know, the wind, and we knew it was coming, and, and it seemed like it never would get there. But then when it hit, then, you know, I thought, oh my goodness, this will probably be the last night of my life. You know, you just think it is just never gonna quit. The night of April 10th was incredibly long. That is... You're listening to KLUR FM, 99.9 megahertz in Wichita Falls, Texas. KLUR is currently operating in emergency mode with emergency standby power. Tornadic activity and power outages this evening. With the National Guard troops to Wichita Falls and also burning tap into rescue operations. Some of the National Guard troops have been called in to the Wichita Falls and burning areas to help in the rescue operations. Darkness blanketed the devastation. The people of Wichita Falls waited for a somber dawn. The morning sun revealed the horror. 45 people dead or dying, hundreds injured, thousands homeless. The tragedy was there for all the world to see. The grim scene this morning in the Red River Valley of Texas and Oklahoma. A series of deadly tornadoes touched down near sunset, wiping out entire sections of Wichita Falls, Texas, and skipping through several other cities. At least 50 people have been killed, almost a 1,000 injured, but those numbers may be revised upward as searchers go through the rubble of homes and shops. Eric Gainsburg of our Dallas Bureau was in Wichita Falls all through the night. He just got back to our, our affiliate, KDFW in Dallas. He is there in those studios this morning. Eric, to bring us up to date on the latest. Well, it's going to be a grim morning, Bob, in Wichita Falls because they are going to have to conduct home-by-home -home searches in a 17-block area where many people are feared trapped in the rubble. And this is one of the uh, tragic aspects of it, Bob, that many people I talked to last night didn't know what had happened to friends and loved ones, members of families, because uh, whole families were separated. If a husband was uh, shopping and a wife at home and the tornado hit, the communication is disrupted, and there are whole families in Wichita Falls this morning that uh, will be awaiting 
in uh, great concern over what happened to their loved one. I have never seen one as wise as this one was. I've, I've never seen pictures like this. I mean, this thing looked like it must have been a, a half mile wide as it was coming out through there. The National Guard has moved in. Governor William Clements has indicated that he will make a trip into the area. And of course, it's virtually certain that it will be declared a uh, disaster area and an attempt will be made to get federal aid for it, Bob. Uh, Wichita Falls, uh, as we mentioned, is in the uh, heart of uh, Tornado Alley, which is kind of a narrow strip of land along the Red River Valley. It stretches from about 150 mi uh, miles northwest of Dallas to 80 miles southwest of Oklahoma City. The area gets uh, more than a share of tornadoes, which are the most violent, destructive type of storms known to man, of course. The most violent, destructive type of storm known to man, and Wichita Falls had been hit by one of the worst. But as the shock wore off, the survivors began digging out, searching, salvaging. While some searched, others grieved. Others use the tragedy for their own profit. A lot of individuals are helping themselves when they're not supposed to. They, they just drive through here in cars and pick stuff up. When we came out here yesterday, there was a big, long van. And they had our, my stereo sitting out here, ready to put on that van. I asked the man how much it was, and he told me it was a dollar a gallon. And I said, how come it's a dollar a gallon when your sign says 68.9? And he said, well, he said, we got to pay these people here overtime to put gas in these cars. And he said, it's going to be a dollar a gallon. I said, all right, I got $3.50. Give me whatever that'll buy. I said, because we, we got to finish delivering sandwiches. And I had a Salvation Army band on my arm and everything. City fathers moved quickly to stop looting and price gouging. While neighbor helped neighbor dig out from the rubble, help came from the outside. Government leaders descended on the city. The president declared the tornado-stricken towns disaster areas, so government bulldozers and trailer houses moved in. As if the disaster of the tornado wasn't enough, victims soon found themselves confronted by long waiting lines, longer government forms, 
and the confusion that inevitably follows a tragedy the magnitude of the Wichita Falls tornado. No insurance or anything, of course, you know, but uh, we'll manage. I'm just going to have to start from scratch, I guess. My house is gone, but I still have two bottles of scotch and, and, and three bottles of soda, so let's just have a party. So at about 2 o'clock in the morning, we had a party down here on the street corner. <laughs> Despite the confusion, the fatigue, the grief, there was an underlying current of hope and strength. As the days passed, it grew stronger. It could be heard in the pounding of hammers and the whine of saws, and felt in the rumble of big machines. Wichitans were digging out, building back. Easter is a holiday of rebirth. It will always be special for Wichitans, people who learned on Easter week the true meaning of rising from destruction, of building from rubble, of coming back.
Channel 6 would like to thank the following individuals for their help in the production of Coming Back. The storm forms photographs were taken by Wolfgang Lange. The tornado strike sequence was taken by Robert Mollett and Fred Dunlap. 8 millimeter footage was photographed by H.J. Kornoyer and Peter Schammers. The Big Tornado is a copyrighted photograph by Troy Glover. Other cooperation was provided by the following individuals and organizations. <laughs>